I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. I am an actual certified professional organizer. I sat for a test and everything. Um, and I'm also a, a certified money breakthrough business coach. And so I like to merge that stuff. And, and I've been studying how habits affect our productivity, our efficiency, and our um, freedom. And so that's where this show came out of. What better way to interview my colleagues and friends that are into productivity and organizing and in the space so you can see how different perspectives come into play when you're getting organized. And we all think differently, so we gotta find the one that resonates with us. So these conversations are all about helping you figure out how to create um, an organized life. And I love that um, my guest today, Janet Taylor, um, suggested that as the topic, and I love it because it's not about getting organized, it's about the organized life and how to live that. Um, so let me tell you just a little bit about Janet. She's been in business and doing the organizing thing for a bit of time as well. About 10 years, is that what it, no, longer than that. You've been doing it a while. Yeah. <sighs> 94, she's been doing it longer than me. Let's put it that way, officially. <laughs> um, she works out of Philadelphia and um, works with a lot of folks to declutter. And she's gotten um, quite a lot of praise for her approach. Um, she's been recognized as a leading business uh, or minority owned business owner in, in um, Philadelphia. And she's been on a lot of national news. And uh, was it Peter Walsh that actually started calling you the clutter queen? Yeah. Is that how you got that? He crowned you? <laughs> Look at that picture, you guys. She's got a crown there behind her. That th That's because she's the clutter queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she's got, you know, she's got her own po podcast as well, which I've listened to a couple episodes and I'm going to go deeper in that because it's really quite lovely. Um, and it, I, I'm super excited. I mean, there's tricks and stuff, but she's been consistently in the top 100 of the Indie Home and Garden and Home and Garden podcast. So that's quite an accomplishment. Congratulations on that. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Um, also, she gives back. So she serves on boards and does a lot of volunteer work, which many of my colleagues do. I'm on a volunteer break right now, but I do believe it's important to give back. Um, so I, I can't wait to hear about some of the things that are important to you. But welcome, Janet. Welcome to my show. <laughs> I am so excited to be here, Mary. I can't wait to start our conversation. I know. I was trying to remember where we actually first met, but we recently did a panel discussion um, that I can't even remember now what the exact question was but your answer just made me like feel good and warm and fuzzy and like that's it in a nutshell and so I was like really excited to talk to you because I know you are a little bit more of a deeper thinker on a lot of these topics than than some of our colleagues and so <laughs> that's nice I enough. wish I could I wish we had the recordings I could have gone back and remembered what exactly it was but I just I have a yeah. note on the sheet from the day we did that panel. It was like, have Janet on interview. That <laughs> oh, was great. Nice. Yay. <laughs> so I'm glad I said something that just kind of made us connect. That's great. I've gotten to the point too, where I'm letting people know when they do something that actually affects me in some way, because it's nice. It's nice to have some warm fuzzies and there's so much going on these days where it's That's like, so everybody's just tearing everybody down. I'm like, <sighs> I feel like, did you have a th thing posted on your Facebook page too about um, queens help tell other or adjust other queens' crowns? Was that you? I've seen I've seen that quote, but I don't know. I don't think I put that on my Facebook page. Okay. But I have seen that quote, and that is yeah. so true. Queens yeah. help adjust. You know, we got you know we you got to. a little something something yep. or mm -hmm. let me just tuck that tag. The little yep. things That's, matter, people. Mm -hmm. That is so true. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Um, okay, so what I want to start with is tell me a little bit because your biography doesn't really have a whole lot about why you wanted to be an organizer. I'd like to hear a little bit more about your natural abilities. <laughs> <laughs> Not very many organizers actually have natural abilities. It's a learned skill, but some people do like to line things up. So tell me where yours intersected. So as a child and a friend reminded me like when I was in my 20s that my toys were always organized. 
Mm -hmm. So I realized then, okay, maybe there's something going on. But the reason I got into this business was that I was working for a job that I truly loved. Um, they were downsizing mm -hmm. and, you know, I came across an article of a woman, another colleague who was actually going into businesses and teaching people how to be more organized. And I said, hmm, people are always saying it about me. So then I just started doing research, mm. found out there was a local chapter, found out, of course, about the national chapter. And that's how I started my journey in 94. So, you mm -hmm. know, I started part time just mm -hmm. to kind of get my feet wet. But then the demand kept increasing. So then I was able to do it full time. Yeah. OK. And how much would you say what percentage of your business is residential versus business organizing at this point and training um, and you do a lot of training right I do a lot of training so training takes up most of my time now but mm -hmm. I would say it's like 80 percent of my business now is residential oh cool okay um we are speaking with Janet Taylor and uh, I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino on the Bold Brave TV network. This is the Streamlined Connection, and we need to take a quick break, but we will come back and um, get into what we find with our clients in terms of what's causing the disorganization. Um, and so we'll be back. The free one minute mail solution works for email too, and you can download it at the link below or over there. Maybe it's a, the link. Today, I'm speaking with Janet Taylor, um, professional organizer and trainer, and we want to explore a little bit about how to create a, an organized life, but it always starts with why you're disorganized in the first place, right? What are, what are the things you find that people do to themselves <laughs> that, that, if organized, would help? So some of the things are they delayed making a decision. Like for mm -hmm. example, you know, they get the mail in and they don't really have a system or process in place. They just kind of put things aside or they right. go out and they buy stuff and it stays in the bag. And then before you know it, they, they shove it in a closet somewhere and then they buy it again. And it's like a cycle. So that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons. And another reason sometimes Miriam, and you probably experience this too, is sometimes they want things to be so perfect. And they yeah. never get started. You know, I want all the right hangers. I need to have all the cute little containers and I need to have color coordinated this, that, and the other. And they start going through that cycle and then nothing gets done. And then, okay. of course, the last one is the sentimental. You know, mm. they have stuff they just don't want to get rid of. And I understand that because of the, you know, emotional attachment. But sometimes it's just figuring out, well, how can I incorporate this piece into my home and maybe mm -hmm. get rid of something else. An example I use is my mother traveled. So she had one of those huge traveling trunks. Mm -hmm. And what I did was I didn't want to part with it. But of course, you know, when you live in an apartment, there's but so much space. So I actually use that as my coffee table mm -hmm. and storage. So it's like a dual purpose thing. So usually it's like the deferring, delaying decisions, the perfectionism, mm -hmm. as well as that sentimental stuff. Those are usually some of the reasons why they just can't let go. I love repurposing. That's one of my favorite things. I did the same thing. I had a toy chest my grandfather had made me and it was my coffee table. Like I just repainted it and it became my coffee table later. Um, interesting. Okay, so one other thing you said about the um, the bags <laughs> Like you go shopping. I'm like, I don't understand this concept. I go shopping because I need or really want something and I can't wait to unwrap it and use it. I don't understand this concept of leaving it in the bag and wadding it. <laughs> and I like, think, you know, what, what? happens is hiding I it from yourself. I think what happens is a lot of times we go shopping and then you come home and then stuff at home. It might mm -hmm. be a dog needs to be walked, kids need something, your partner, mm -hmm. spouse wants something, and then you get, you know, you get into that space and then yeah. you kind of, you know, you know you bought it, but then other things take place. And so therefore you don't, you know, you really don't remember it. And then when, you know, you want to like, oh, I get organized. So you just want things straightened up and you shove it in a closet or something. Yeah. And then you finally go through the spring cleaning or fall cleaning and you're like, oh, this is where it is. So yeah, that hiding stuff so that you can appear perfect in public and then behind closed doors, the bowling ball falls on your head when you open mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remember those old sitcoms? 
Oh yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes people's closets, people's right. closets are like that. Like you said, they open their closet and it's like everything falls out. Yeah. It's all holding everything else up. Pantries, especially, I find that a lot. It's like, well, you don't buy another bag of chips. There's nowhere for it to sit on a flat mm -hmm. surface. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> right. Um, do you find that people have a hard time knowing what they actually want? Like they don't want to be overwhelmed anymore, but past that, like, well, but what, why, what for, what are you going to do instead? What, what's the desired outcome of getting organized in the first place? I think a lot of people, they have the desire, mm -hmm. but they see all this stuff and they start thinking it's going to take this amount of time and I'm going to have to get rid of all of this stuff. And they start thinking about all this stuff. And sometimes it just gives them like a standstill. And they, don't wanna move forward. and they don't want to move forward when in reality, people need to understand that being organized is really being surrounded by all the things you use and you love and just getting right? rid of everything else and just creating a simple system. For example, Mary, you know, a lot of people now, we all take our shoes off when we come home, you know, and then we just mm -hmm. kick them off at the door. And I tell people, it's just a simple system. Have a shoe rack. So, you know, you can put the shoes there when you come home and then when you're going out the door, you can actually know that you're wearing the exact same shoe and not maybe, right. you know, you're wearing black shoes, but they don't, don't match. So it's, right. just, you know, it's just, you know, it's just like simple things. <laughs> the number of times my mom has arrived at a restaurant wearing two different shoes is kind of amazing. Actually. <laughs> um, I think that's a good point, though. I think. One of the things that disorganized people don't always realize is it's easier and you can have more freedom by taking care of this stuff. Like they're making things worse by this behavior of putting it off or hiding things um, and not and just buying uh, mindlessly mm -hmm. like and timing. Do you, do you laugh about the timing? The fact that it's going to take us six hours to do this entry hall table drawer, but we can do the garage in three hours. <laughs> right? yeah, and think, yeah, and I think a lot of times people, they have a, they feel like they can just go in and just work on a project. Like, oh, I'm going to do the garage on Saturday. And I tell people, wait, just, just, just back up. Just break look, that down. <laughs> just break it down into something manageable because what's going to happen is you're going to get halfway in there. You're going to get tired. You can get frustrated. You're going to close the door and then you're going to go in the house and probably binge watch something. And then nothing will get done. And so, any sorting or categorizing you already did is going to get shoved back in the closet. And now you got to make those decisions again. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. going to take you like 20 minutes at least to just figure out where you were when you left off the project. So mm -hmm. I think chunking down is definitely one of those things people don't do. And it's like, well, it won't make a difference if I do the pencil cup. And it's like, yes, it will tomorrow when you need a pencil. Yes. Yeah. And the same thing with junk drawers. It's like doing yeah. a drawer at a time. Don't feel like you got to do them all. Just do a drawer at a time. And I even share with people when I do my closet seasonally, I don't go in there and just do everything. I'll do like my shoes, the handbags. Mm -hmm. I'll, right. And I'll do my clothes. So I just break it down so it's manageable for me. Yeah, I think because living an organized life is a constant ongoing editing process. You're always curating. New things happen. New things come in. Old things need to go out or they need to be matched up. Um, you know, it, and it's interesting. You have the skills, people. You put your ice cream in the freezer. That means you can put your shoes on a rack. That means you can put the rake away in the garage. So um, we'll get more into this a little bit and some suggestions about how we're going to actually tackle a project um, when we come back. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The links are here somewhere. Welcome back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And Janet Taylor is here talking to me and you about all of the best uh, ways to approach an organizing project so that you can live a more organized life. And before the break, we were talking about, you know, wrong time estimates, let's call them. <laughs> 
the way we all lie to ourselves a little bit. I mean, it happens to me as well. I will be putting something off and then I'm like finally getting around to do it. And it takes like five minutes and you're like, what the hell? Why, why was that so hard to start? Mm -hmm. So don't think just because we're organizers, it doesn't happen to us. We just know that that happens and we go with it anyway. So <laughs> Jenna, what are some of your... Um, What's your approach to helping people figure out where to start? So usually, you know, I like to do a walkthrough and then mm -hmm. really kind of get a better understanding. And so, for example, you know, I did a walkthrough on one client. She's like, oh, yeah, you know, I need to get my home office really organized. And she had already retired, so it wasn't like she was running a business. So then when we went to the bedroom, it was like the first thing I said, well, how do you sleep in here? <laughs> Right. And she was like, oh, yeah, I can't sleep. And then she started talking about all these different ailments that she was actually suffering from. I said, OK, I think we need to switch this. I understand you want the home office done. I said, but let's get this bedroom done first, because if you get the bedroom done, you'll be able to sleep better. Your health will be better. You'll have more energy and you'll be a little bit more motivated to really kind of tackle and focus on these other areas that we want to work yeah. on together. Yeah, it's all connected that way. Sleep is one of the first things I have my clients work on when they are struggling with overwhelm because chances are they're not sleeping well. And it's mm -hmm. the number one overlooked productivity tool, right? Yep. Getting enough rest. Yep. Our brains get depleted, people. You got to refresh. Yeah, and I mean, and that's like the first place we wake up and in mm -hmm. the last place. And it place needs to be like our own little sanctuary where you're not pushing stuff off of the side. You don't have books piled up that you probably have already read mm -hmm. two and three times and stuff overflowing. It just needs to be a nice place, organized. Yeah, it's um, it's that making your bed habit as well. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. are like, well, that's a silly habit to start with, but it actually is designed, that whole concept of making your bed it's a threshold concept, a threshold habit, and it proves to yourself every day that you can accomplish something. And so it is very important. I've, you know, I've made my bed easier. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. Um, I guess I was talking with Ryan Lanier. We put um, duvet covers and don't use a top sheet because it's faster to make your mm -hmm. bed, but you're still mm -hmm. making the bed. So I love that. Um, what about, um, do you have any tips when people do start getting overwhelmed during an organizing session, what they can do to to reel it back in and, and leave it at a place that's not disruptive? Well, I always like to tell people that first, before you even start, just kind of have a like a strategy because that's it. That's mm -hmm. what I do. I come in, I have a strategy, I have a plan on how we're going to tackle things. I said, so first, right. write your plan out. The next thing you do is you really want to schedule time. Now, mm -hmm. I always suggest to people, whatever time, sometimes you may only have 15 minutes or you may have a couple of hours, but at least put it in your calendar if you need to get a, a, a timer and then just focus on that area. And also what I find sometimes, and I know Miriam, you have, is that people go from room to room the room and you need to just stay in the space get it done get it organized and then move to the next space so yeah and you have to honor the space you've already done so I always tell my clients it doesn't matter if you add more to the pile two rooms away do not add more to this room because we already did it unless it's something that goes in that drawer with the things we already defined as living in that space so I think that's really important as well but um yeah the go back and forth this bookshelf over here and this drawer over here and then oh my gosh that is a mess too and then nothing has ever finished well nothing's ever finished in organizing anyway but it's never complete to the point where it's fully usable and enjoyable if you do that and then i also tell sometimes clients who are really hesitant to kind of start small Mm -hmm. to build up the momentum because one time I was working with a client and she just had all these piles of papers in her bedroom mm -hmm. and we started off with a small pile and she said well I thought we would and I was like no we're going to start and we're going to work our way around to the bit and by the time we got to the big pile she was so motivated she was ready just like to let yeah. things go because she saw the progress so sometimes mm -hmm. just starting small starting on that drawer or starting on the corner of your dresser or maybe even peeking under your bed, just doing right. things, the small things. Yeah, our brains actually re 
require a little bit of practice to make better decisions. And so rather than getting hung up for 20 minutes on one piece of paper, which every once in a while someone does, um, set that piece of paper aside and make the decision that I don't have enough information to make the decision yet. That in itself is a decision. And then you move on to the, the next one. So we're lo always looking for the easy decision making first. And then we go back to that pile of harder decisions because you will have more practice and be better at it. Mm -hmm. And that right? is so true. That is so true. And you know what, Miriam? It's interesting because one of my clients, she had a room with junk. And it mm -hmm. basically had clothes, papers, bath, and body. Mm -hmm. She's just like, oh, well, Janet, I'm just so overwhelmed. I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to get three bins, put all the clothes in the bin, papers in the bin, bath and body stuff in the bin. I don't want you making any decisions. Right. Just, just sort. And she was like, okay. And she's like, I did it. And she's like, and then she started going through the clothes. And I said, it makes it easier because then you realize you've got three of the same t-shirt, five right. of the same sock. It makes mm -hmm. it easier. I said, because when you're constantly going back and forth, sometimes that makes it a little challenging. So yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. you're right. Just, just do a little simple, start simple. Yeah. I love that sort, especially when there's only like three or four categories, because I always tell my clients too, it's easier to look through one pile than it is to look through 87 piles for the thing you are looking for. It may be a bigger pile, but it's still easier. It's not going to freak you out and you're not going to be tempted to go start looking through the other pile before you finish getting all the way to the bottom of the first one. You're still just going to look through until you get there. Um, so I love that. And, and having the information of how many are involved. Um, so that's, you guys, sorting. That's why sorting is the first thing you do after strategy. Okay. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection. We are on Bold Brave TV Network, and I'm talking to Janet Taylor, professional organizer today, about how to chunk down an organizing project so you can live a more organized life. And we will be right back after this break. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Janet Taylor and I are talking about chunking down organizing projects. And actually during the break, we happen to mention what happens when clients want to reschedule or have to reschedule because something else comes up um, and how to recover from that and put it in perspective and decide if it's worth rescheduling or changing or if it's it makes more sense to continue forward with the original plan as well. Um, the example we were actually using is when like a repair person has to come during an organizing session we already have scheduled. And Janet was just about to tell me what was going on with this particular client because I said I often tell them just let's do it anyway and I'll show you how to deal with that interruption and get back focused. But what 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 do you suggest to this particular client, Janet? Well, for this particular client, because the location was not going to be her home, oh. we had to reschedule. It was going to yeah. be at her office. But I agree with you because a yeah. lot of times people feel like, oh, my goodness, there's, there's something else going on. And I'll share with people, you know, I could be in another room. They could be in another space so we can still move along with the project because a lot of times, as you mm -hmm. know, when they start the rescheduling, then that means the start the delaying of the entire process. And then before you know it, they're like, well, you know, I don't know if I'm ready for this. And you want to keep that momentum and that motivation going. Yeah, they kind of use it as an excuse to help other people at the expense of their own well-being of being organized. Um, and I do, you know, there's a difference between not being available for the session and having knowing there's a couple of appointments or things that are going to flow through our work session, but require a minute or 30 seconds or maybe five minutes. There's a difference. Um, I also, it cracks me up. I've literally had clients want to reschedule 12 different appointments to make our appointment work. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we could just look at next week when you're a little more open. Like, <laughs> I want you to be excited and motivated, but rescheduling 12 things does not make your life easier. Mm -hmm. And we're all about making it easier. So the decision has been made. It's just delayed a little bit. So um, I think all of that plays into it. But that's another one of those points where people do it to themselves, right? Yeah, and that's true. Yeah, and you really, and it's like just about scheduling. It's about mm -hmm. scheduling, but also about priorities too. 
Yeah. So if you've made a session or schedule with an organizer, then that should be a priority because that's your home, your life. You mm-hmm. know, as you do, you it impacts like the money part of it too because maybe you're getting right. the paperwork in order, et cetera. So yeah, it's all about priorities. It's um and it's interesting how few women prioritize themselves and their own well being. And they say they prioritize their family, but they haven't quite set up the actual nurturing supportive environment yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is so true. And setting it up saves so much time. So incremental progress, exponential time, right? <laughs> so true, so true. <laughs> um, okay, so speaking of time, we were talking, we were going to get into how, um, how do we help people prioritize their time and what to choose? Do you have so- some stuff you go through with your clients on that? So I always like to look at people's schedule and actually what's really going on in their life. Because I think sometimes, because you know, our calendars can get as cluttered as our closets. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize how much they actually have going on. I mean, people are working full time. You've got the kids and the homework and the walking the dog. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're taking care of an elderly relative. And then, of course, you add on all those extracurricular stuff you're doing. You know, people have to really look at all of that when they are planning one to bring in an organizer or even try to do it themselves. It's like, what's actually going on? So that's the first thing. How much time do you realistically have? Because you think you've got four hours to do this project, when in reality, after you do everything, you may have an hour and a half. So that's being one, Mm -hmm. being realistic. And then also, what can you do within that time to make yourself feel motivated and also get the space done? But I tell people, if you spend an hour each week getting organized, that's 52 hours within a year. Um, A lot of times people don't Mm -hmm. understand that if you spend just maybe 15 minutes the night before planning your next day, you save yourself an hour. So you get that hour back. If you spend an hour just sitting down and maybe planning a project like a garage organizing or basement Mm -hmm. organ, you, you know, you gain three to four hours. So sometimes it's that planning and then realistically looking like, okay. You know, on Thursday night, I can do a couple of hours of maybe like cleaning out a a junk drawer or maybe on Saturday, instead of doing this, maybe I'll have somebody come in like an organizer and work with me a few hours because then I'll get to tackle twice as much because I'll have an expert, you know, helping me out. Yeah, I love that. Um, And it's interesting, the time it, you know, it trickles over from a big project to our schedules and we tend to not write down the things that we lie about the time. So it cracks me up when people, they'll go to a fast food restaurant for dinner because they don't have time to heat a can of soup in the microwave. Really? Like if you're short on time, why don't you just have some soup? Why don't you have a sandwich? Why? It doesn't require like the driving or, oh, I've got a few minutes to run to the store. I'm very fast. Like it c- kind of made me laugh during um, COVID. I started using Instacart for some of my grocery deliveries. Mm-hmm. And the first couple times it was like, we just saved you two hours. And I'm all, I've never spent two hours going to the grocery store. And it just took me an hour to get all the stuff, you know, all the account logged in and figure out the <laughs> platform. And now, you know, a year later, it's been, or two years later. Oh my God, it's been two years. <laughs> it's been two years. <laughs> the time it has saved is is considerable but it's it was funny because i've never spent that long at a grocery store ever in my life i'm like i have a list i go aisle by aisle i pick up everything on the list and i leave but it does take the driving time and the putting the groceries away time Mm -hmm. like the forgotten time that people need to fold their laundry and put it away (laughs) yeah and i was just going to mention that mary because people it's like they they know they have to wash so they wash the clothes Mm -hmm. They take them out the wash, put them in the dry, but then it's like that next step. And I tell people, you need to have the whole process because that's a pile of clothes that you can eliminate in your house, in your home, in your life. Mm -hmm. So from start to finish, they were like, well, yeah, I do the laundry. No, doing the laundry means putting the the clothes away. So making sure you do that. Exactly. And this is 
perfect because when we come back from this break, we are going to talk a little bit about routines and systems support your routines. And so we'll get a little bit more into laundry because for whatever reason, laundry is a fascinating topic to so many people, um, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> Love my laundry system. But I am Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we are speaking with Janet Taylor. And uh, we'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Talking to Janet Taylor about organizing. And we got into laundry which leads us into routines because if you make it a routine, you save a lot of time and you have more less clutter and more space. But talk about why routines are so important for people. Routines help you really truly live that organized life. Like you right. just mentioned, you know, earlier, making the bed. That's a routine, getting up, yeah. making the bed. And so then when you walk into your bedroom, mm -hmm. it just looks so much nice, organized and clear and cleaner. Um, mm -hmm. Doing laundry, doing it from start to finish that eliminates those piles and just having a designated day. And it could be a Tuesday, one day, a Wednesday, another, mm -hmm. week, you know, and just doing things like that. And even, you know, when you come home after doing going shopping, you take things out of the bag and maybe put them in the room they belong or you put things away. It's those those routines that help us really create a home that is organized. Yeah, it's um, it also ties to our muscle memory and our behaviors. So routines are what causes habits to form. And some routines are going to be more frequent than others, but it's going to be a series of steps you follow when that thing happens, when you are cued to do that thing. So what's your cue? Is it when the laundry hamper is full or is it because it's Monday at 10 or something else? Is it because the kid said I'm out of underwear? <laughs> which, which, <laughs> which way is it? You know, I remember being a kid and, and my mom um, wanted to be an organized person, but she is not. And so there were days where I'd be like, mom, I don't have any underwear to wear to school today. And she was like, finally, I'm like, I need to learn how to do my own laundry. And she said, okay. And there's the stool. And I, I, as soon as I could do my own laundry, standing on a stool, I started doing my own laundry because it just, it would get done regularly. It wasn't mm -hmm. like it never happened, but we lived kind of minimally. I've always lived minimally. And so there was like a week, maybe two weeks worth of clothes. And then after that, you had to have something done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you're right. And one of the things I learned from my mother is that every Tuesday night, she would kind of open up the refrigerator, see mm -hmm. what was in there, needed to be going to trash, it expired yes. because trash day was on Wednesday. And right. now I have a habit where I kind of go through my home on the night before trash day. I'll go, you know, look at my shredding bin, go through all of that, you know, see if yep. there's anything that needs to be moved out. And also what I've done to save myself some time is I've actually incorporated food prep into mm -hmm. because it helps me eat healthier. It helps me save money. Right. And so, you know, just and a lot of times people think, oh, it takes so much time. Actually, it doesn't. You just kind of fix all your food at one time, put it in little containers and then throughout the week, you know, all you have to do is heat things up and then you don't have to like go out and, you know, you get to save money, too. So. Right. It's all connected, everybody. How you take care of things, your house, yourself, your people, your food, your health, all of those things play together. And that's why routines are so important. Also, mm -hmm. every time you do it, you get better at it. Mm -hmm. And so it gets faster. The efficiency mm -hmm. factor kicks in mm -hmm. and your brain doesn't use as much energy. So you actually end up energized because it's done. It's checked off the list. It's a satisfaction yep. instead of a Oh, I'm too tired to deal. Yeah. Yeah. And and then also having a routine to have a smoother morning. And that mm -hmm. means creating systems at the front door. It could be a place where you put your shoes, maybe, right. you know, your keys. You know, of course, now we have to have the mask and, mm -hmm. you know, just having maybe an organized, you know, entryway closet so that when you, you know, leave your house, you already have to be able to pick things up. And then when you come home, you get in a routine, you hang the coat up, you put the keys here, et cetera. So it yeah. really, it saves you time. But it also, you know, relieve some stress too because then in the morning you're not frantically looking for the right shoe or mm -hmm. the keys exactly 
that's why you put them in the same place all the time. It is not to constrain you and your creativity and your free spirit. <laughs> we are not telling you you have to keep the keys on a hook. You can keep them wherever you want, but it needs to be the place you keep them. Um, yeah, that that's the one that always kills me. I can't schedule it. It will, it will, what if I'm not in the mood to do it that day? Well, certain people do make their prioritization decisions based on their energy level or their interest level or their commitment level. And so you need to figure out how to navigate that as well. And so that's the other thing working with a professional organizer can help you figure out the best way for you to do it. Not just that's what the book said, because that's, that's really the problem with a lot of organizing books, right? This is my way. Do it my way. My way will work for everybody. And it's not true. Not true. And you're, you're <laughs> right. And you have to allow. And, and you know what? Being organized allows you the flexibility. I yeah. mean, yes, I usually wake up Saturday morning, do all my food prep. But then there are times when I have to work with a client on Saturday on the rare occasions that I do. So that means that I have to choose another day when it's convenient for me, sometimes it's Friday morning, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a Sunday morning. But, you know, those, you know, and that's what it allows for, for flexibility is just being organized, having systems, having schedules. It allows you to be more creative as well. And it also allows you sometimes you can just do nothing because usually I have made a vow, Mary, that Sunday is my do nothing day. I can yes. stay in bed as long as I want. Yep. I don't have to cook. Yeah, You know, I just have to heat up, maybe fix myself a fancy breakfast. But if I want to lay in bed all day, I can because everything I want is done. Yes. Um, I think that that I do the same thing. I it's mine is usually Saturday. But when I have a client, although this year, my resolution was no Saturday clients. <laughs> um, we'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, I think it's really important to have rest. And I think it's really important to look at what you can do to support that rest. You know, we talked about having a clean and orderly bedroom, um, meal prep, so you don't even have to think about that stuff. Um, there's little bits you can find all the time, everybody. Little bits of time are just laying around waiting for you to pick them up. It's just a matter of getting your head right around it and what the approach is gonna be. Um, I love this. Okay, so, we have to take one more break in a minute, but um, I did want to see one thing. I have one more question for you after the break, um, and that's going to be, are there other areas that we overlook in terms of organizing? I think it's going to be a quick answer, um, but I love this because all of these things we're talking about, these routines, these um, breaking down projects into steps, they apply to our business and our lives at home and it's all great. So I'm Mary Martizzi Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And uh, we'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Time Solution online course and learn easy ways to control your time and tasks. Links here somewhere. Down there, I think. And Janet Taylor, professional organizer, was just going to tell us about what's something that's often overlooked in terms of, of getting organized. I feel it's our important papers because there are a lot of times when I, you know, you go into these beautiful, big, <laughs> wonderful homes and you ask them, okay, so do you have like a system in place? And they were like, well, you know, stuff shoved over here and over there. So it's really having those important papers, you know, you know, mm. of course your estate plan, if you have mm -hmm. one, but also just, you know, things about the house and maybe warranties and, you know, all of that stuff. Yeah. And even if it's not physical, at least have it scanned and put somewhere safe. So usually it's those important documents. I love that. Those essential. Um, and you can set up a really easy file system, people. Like nine categories max in an accordion file. And you can get most of that, the stuff you actually need. Um, I love that because that's, you know, most people call us because they think paper is their issue, but then they don't want to deal with the important papers, which is odd. They want to deal with the magazines and the catalogs, but not necessarily the important stuff. Um, I love that. Um, any last thought you want to share with us before we wrap up today? I'm so excited. This was a great conversation. 
that organizing is a journey and not a destination. It's a quote I always see out there, and it mm -hmm. is so true. It's a it's a it's a journey. You know, we that. go through we go through life. You know, you're single, then you get married, you have children, and then of course they grow up and you downsize. So you just have to think of your you know your organizing journey as your life journey. Right. I love that. Okay, so. Uh, we got to wrap it up. So thank you so much, Janet Taylor. If you want to find out more about Janet, you can visit her website, JanetMTaylor.com. Yes. Yeah. And she's got uh, an ebook for everybody. It is called Organizing Affairs. And the link will be in the description um, if you're interested in getting that. Um, I uh, will have Tiffany Blasting Game on next week, who is another one of my friends who talks a lot about simple living. And so we are going to take it to the next level on how to simplify things. Um, as always, don't forget that you can reach out to me at Miriam at more than organized.net. You can share feedback, um, comments, questions. If you ever have questions, I'm happy to answer on the next episode. Um, and tell all your friends because getting organized is so much more fun when you do it together than when you do it by yourself. Cause that can be, I mean, it can be a little bit Zen sorting nuts and bolts. There's a reason they do it in the movies, um, but it's actually more fun to take the journey together. In my opinion, it can be, there's nothing shameful about it. We all just got to do it. Um, and if you want more information on, on uh, my offerings, there's lots of free resources, including the One Minute Mail Solution Kit available at morethanorganized.net. And um, let's see. I feel like I have a couple more seconds. I do. I have a whole minute. Um, I want to just mention that we have this this desire to live this free life and it does require a framework. The framework can be flexible and it can be plug and play. I love the example of, of thinking of Legos. And if you have, you have it set up this way and you may need that yellow Lego with three slots for something else that day, you just take it out. You can replace it with a different one or two smaller ones or whatever. It's plug and play. You rearrange the frameworks so that you can live that organized life. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I hope your organizing endeavors uh, serve you well. And I'm Miriam Ortiz-Pino with the Streamlined Connection. And in the meantime, have a delightful day.